Hey guys, in this video I want to show you how I've been painting sort of fluids within um, like a, a bottle or in this case a sort of canister on the back of this uh, Adeptus Mechanicus guy. Now, um, if you ignore the bright colours, the, the Army's 80s themes, I'm going to try and focus on um, these two vials or canisters on his back and I'll do them containing different coloured fluids. Um, but so far all I've done is um, add a base coat of um, regal blue. Now this is obviously quite an old Games Workshop paint. Um, you see just um, the sort of shade of blue there. It doesn't particularly matter if I'm perfectly honest. Any dark blue will, will, would have the same sort of effect. Um, but for the next stage I'm going to mix up some of this regal blue with this, um, how do you say it, Baharoth blue? I might be butchering that name, uh, but there we go. So this is the sort of thing where you're going to just have to have a bit of trial and error. I'm going to grab some of this blue just that we can see just off the side there, just a tiny bit. And I'm going to grab maybe like two parts darker blue, one part lighter blue, and we're just going to mix it up. It's kind of going a bit of a denim colour. If I focus back in on this. Now when you're painting these bottles or you know whatever it might be, try and think about where the fluid will be resting. Now he's kind of, um, if he's sat on a flat ground, this canister, the fluid is going to be heavier on the left hand side than it is on, on the right and then kind of the opposite on, on this one. So with what we're doing right now with the, the dark blues, we're actually painting the, the empty part of the glass, if, it's, if that's what it's made of. Let me try and bring it closer and focus again. And I'm going to try and just, if I'm picturing in my mind's eye where the fluid is going to be, just above it, I'm going to try and paint sort of in a bit of a circular motion and then bring it up onto this top um, funnel here. And then from the side, you might get a better shot. Try and bring it round again. So um, I'm assuming the fluid is going to be about here. I'll just put a line in there. It doesn't particularly matter because I'll go over um, with the, uh, I think I'll do this one green. Um, but yeah, we've kind of just painted that top half with this lighter blue that you can just about see. Um, I'm going to add some water back into my mixture so it doesn't go too dry. And, and I'm going to do the same for this one. So again, the fluid is kind of be sitting at that sort of level. So the camera's in front of me, but sometimes I'm not really paying attention to that. So it might go off shot a little. Um, so I'm going to try and paint the top corner here, this light blue. Now forgive me, because normally when I paint this sort of stuff, I don't have my phone precariously balanced just in front of my face. So that always adds an extra element um, to this. But I'm going to do the same sort of thing here. And because this side is slightly lower than where I've left off there, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to pull in. So you can just about see what I'm doing there. Um, with the top, the entire of this top section of glass is going to be uh, empty, so to speak. So I'm just going to colour in the middle of it with this lighter blue. Do the same round the back. Um, if anyone's interested, the brush I'm using is one of the small layer brushes um, from um, Games Workshop. It's lost a few hairs, if I'm perfectly honest. I seem to paint all my models with small sort of detail brushes and they get knackered fairly quickly. Um, so now from this side, if we can see, I'm going to try and mirror the shape I've done here on the other side, so I can go around making sure it's actually in shot for you. The servo skull's getting in the way, isn't it? Just paint this top bit. And again around the back, trying to carry on the line that I'd put in there. Um, so that's already dry, really, the, the first one. I'm going to mix out 
Just get rid of some of the paint from the brush. Uh, and now we have to um, kind of highlight it a little bit further. So with the mixture still being fairly wet on the palette, I'm going to add kind of equal parts now. So I'm bringing it more into a lighter shade. It's kind of a sort of a denim colour, but if you bought your denim in the early 90s. And I'm just again going to pick out even lighter up the top and run it slightly along this funnel. Like that. Oh, servo skull is in the way. And I'm going to throw another line kind of separate to what I'm doing there. Can we see? Just about. There we go. Um, and then again in the sort of top corners, I'm going to throw in a little bit of shading. Now for the top of this particular uh, vessel, bottle, I'm going to just paint kind of this side. So I'm happy with it being darker on the side that's kind of leaning um, away from, from the model. Um, Again, I would probably be a little bit more precise with this. I didn't have the phone just in front of me. But there we are. So we're getting there. Now, I'm not bothering with any of this lighter blue here. And now I'm going to add tiny bits of detail with the lighter blue, just kind of as it is. And here, again, if we're thinking about it being glass, there will be a shine. So I'm going to run a light line just along this funnel. Like so. Um, and then again with this, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run it along the straight edge here. Like that. Try something similar on the reverse, which I've just realised I didn't do the mid blue in either. There we go. Just testing, yeah. But never mind, because the mixture's still wet, so I can use it. And then on the very tops, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of a shine, sort of around here. So yeah, that's pretty much. Um, where I want it to be. Now to kind of cheat and blend it all in together so the, the highlights aren't so um, stark, I'm going to mix up and shake my Drakenhof Nightshade, which is a, a wash that is very, very dark blue, sometimes borders on the purple, depending on what you're layering it with. And let's focus in again. I'm just going to cover this and it's going to darken the whole thing down. Um, be mindful if it's starting to pull too much in an area, just brush that away so it doesn't, doesn't completely obscure what you've just painted. Um, don't worry about getting this wash down towards the area that, moving off camera again, uh, down towards the area that you're going to paint the fluid because it really doesn't matter, you'll cover it all. So I'm going to add it up here, add it up the top. Sometimes with washes it's, it's beneficial to use it like a wash, kind of like you're caking it on. Um, but sometimes it's, it's worth just using it like a paint, you know, not being very heavy with it, just applying it to exactly the area you want it to be. So that is um, the empty part of the glass done, and I'm going to let it. I'm going to let it dry for a couple of seconds. It, it would dry fairly quickly, but there we go. Make sure that's closed. Yeah. So I'll let him dry, 
and uh, come back to it in a second. So it's only been a couple of minutes um, and that's that's dry. Um, so yeah, it's muted it all down, kind of darkened it. Um, so if you weren't that precise with the highlights, the, the washes normally cover a multitude of sins. Um, so now I'm gonna start painting um, the fluids inside. And I wanna try and um, do them two different colors. I said he's, he's quite bonkers anyway with his color scheme, but um, this one I'm gonna do sort of like a green to match his, I've literally only just started collecting Mechanica, so I have no idea what this gun's called, uh, this one. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'll do a base coat of um, bogey green. Now this is from the company that originally made um, the Citadel paints. This is a replacement to snot green. Um, forgive me, I don't know what the um, the current Citadel version of this is. As you can see, it's kind of like a forest emerald green. Um, it, again, it doesn't particularly matter uh, the exact shade, um, so long as it's sort of like that not completely dark, like the, the Dark Angel's green can be, but um, that sort of mid-tone, <clears throat> because the fluid ends up uh, being quite bright. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really matter. But the main important thing here is uh, painting the fluid so it, it looks like it would sit there naturally. Obviously he's kind of, if I was to, he's kind of stood like that, um, having the fluid matching the angle of the, um, glass wouldn't it wouldn't look right it would stand out so we've got to try and anyway, let me refocus got one of these brand new little uh, camera tripods which is pretty good but every time i touch the screen to refocus it kind of bounces around so anyway we will get there in the end so i'm going to try and curl it round because i've been waffling on so long the paint's starting to dry try and curl it round and from underneath. So in these little bits. Now one thing I have started doing recently, um, which I, I can't quite believe I haven't done previously, is I've got into the habit of actually painting models um, before you completely assemble them. Uh, obviously in this case the guy isn't on his base because the base, uh, if you've been following my blog, these guys, their bases are pretty uh, pretty nuts as well. So it just makes it easier to get to areas you might not might not easily be able to uh, reach. I'll try and pull this fluid up a little bit further. This particular paint is very thin, which is great for multiple layers, but when you're painting over a dark color like this, it doesn't help so much. And of course, this glass bottle has these little spiky indentations which makes things a little bit harder but this is only the base color so it doesn't really matter once you layer it up with all the others try not to paint the servo skull so yeah i've um, been really getting into painting models in component parts, then gluing them together at the end. You, there's so many things, as Games Workshop's models get more and more complicated, there's so many elements that you just wouldn't be able to reach um, if you glue it together. This one is a little bit of an exception. I got the guy off of eBay, this figure. Um, so he was already gl um, glued together. So just painting underneath in <laughs> a bit of a pain. But there we are. So we can see that, uh, hopefully it becomes clearer as I progress through this, the fluid is kind of listening to the kind of the left here. Um, now what I will do once uh, the camera's off is just underneath of this bottle there are uh, sections of what would be the glass. Now I'm not going to attempt to paint this with the uh, the camera being between me and my brush. I'll do this afterwards but you'll get the the overall understanding from what I'm trying to do at the top half. So now that's uh, drying, I'm going to do a little bit of a mix between uh, this mid-green and a very, very light green. Now I'm going with Moot Green, which I think used to be called Scorpion Green. It's obviously very, very light. Um, the actual shade is entirely down to you. If you want it to be a bit more realistic, 
I would go with obviously more muted colours. Um, this particular army, or well, who am I kidding? All my armies are brightly coloured. Um, I'm going to mix together this in kind of equal parts. Um, yeah, fairly happy with this. Now, with this fluid, as it gets uh, closer towards the bottom, I want it to be lighter. So I want to leave the tiniest gap. Of bogey green. One thing I've realized is I can't actually talk very well and paint at the same time. I normally stop waffling when the brush actually hits the model. Now I want to try and get in right into the the edges of the the ironwork. Ordinarily, I'd leave sort of a darkened recess because I want that shading. But I'm going to go with whatever fluid is in here is fairly uh, bright, so therefore there wouldn't be that shade between the actual goo. You can just about see it. Yeah, for those of you that have been watching some of my earlier videos, I've moved house and um, I made a bit of a mistake there, but never mind. I've moved house and the property we're in at the moment has um, roof windows just above where I'm sat right now, which you would think would be perfect for doing painting videos because you get all that natural daylight and just to the left of me I've got big patio doors of course during the daylight the kids are awake so there we go uh, now the next little thing I'm going to do is I'll put the bogey green away yeah. and I'm going to use this moot green straight from the pot and again I'm going to the area that I'm actually painting is getting smaller each time. So I would really advise making sure the paint is fully dry before you do this. I'm kind of rushing ahead because I'm mindful of uh, getting on with it and also not having to do so much video editing. Okay, so it's starting to get lighter as it gets towards the bottom. Uh, it will become a lot clearer once I paint these under sections as well. Um, now, the next little part, um, I'm going to use Screaming Skull or Bleach Bone for those, um, those of us that have been in the hobby for quite some time. Um, bleach Bone or Screaming Skull rather is my go-to paint for highlighting anything. Um, you can pretty much mix it with any paint to um, create a natural highlight for that shade. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of this um, loot green, grab a little bit of this, mix it together, and we've got quite a muted shade now. Now two things I want to do with this. Firstly, I want to kind of trace, make sure I've don't have too much paint on the brush. I want to trace the upper line of this fluid. Like that. Help it in focus, wouldn't it? And then I'll do the same on the other side, which is a lot more tricky because of this servo skull. So forgive me if you're not seeing this. A little bit of an error there you can see but I that doesn't matter as I know what's coming next um, now to make this appear like it's fizzy I want to throw in some tiny little dots of this color as well
just like so. Uh, and then I'm going to grab some bleach bone kind of as it is. I'm not going to bother washing my brush out because it kind of aids for the paint mixing together. And from the middle, I'm going to highlight this line that I've just done. So it's kind of lighter one end. And I'm going to go in here. Paintbrush is knocking the camera now. And do the other side. And then with this lighter paint, I'm going to go in and just do a couple more lighter bubbles. There we are. Almost there on the green. Now if you don't have this next paint, don't worry too much. Um, let me get paint on my fingers. If you do get paint on the fingers, like I've just done, because I've closed this paint pot and it's all just squidged out the back, um, do make sure you wipe it dry. Because the worst thing is when you go and pick up your model and you've just finished a section and you realise you've then got a fingerprint on it. Where was I? Yeah. So if you don't have this next paint, don't worry about it too much. But because I want to have it so um, illuminescent, I've got this Vallejo um, fluorescent green. Now, it's um, I've, I've done a quick video on these fluorescent paints and they do need a pretty, pretty good shake. Um, and they are quite thin, but in this example, that's perfect. Uh, I'm just going to dab out a little bit. And as I said earlier, I want the bottom of this fluid to appear quite bright. And because this is quite thin, it can go over what I've done pretty easily. The, um, all the colours, the bright colours on this model at the moment, they're all these Vallejo, if I'm saying that right, fluorescent paints. Pretty cool. They don't, it's not exactly, it doesn't stand up to scrutiny close up as you can see, but I think on a tabletop uh, point of view, it's quite mad. So yeah, it just, it just made the bottom of it that little bit more fluorescent. Um, and so once I get the underside of that bottle done as well, I think it will... Uh, stand out. Um, now a couple of things left to do on this. Um, if you wanted to, and I probably will do kind of off shot, uh, off camera, I will apply a wash of Hex Wraith Flame over top of this um, liquid part. I'm just going to let this fluorescent paint dry before I do that. Um, should be almost done. This is where, you know, if you were doing this on your own, you know, give yourself the time, wait until it actually dries properly. Um, but I love this this technical paint, I think it's great, um, especially with these bright colours. This green uh, um, part here, this was just undercoated white. You had the fluorescent green over top, and then simply this hex wraith, hex wraith flame uh, over it again. With this, I don't really mind if I get some of this um, green wash onto the metal because it'll ever so slightly appear that it's kind of a glowing fluid. There we go. Just want to focus again. It's getting there. It's getting there. Last couple of stages. We're going to need a light grey. I've got administratum grey here uh, and a white scar. So the administratum grey, I want to water it down just a tad. And somewhere, wherever you think the light is going to is going to hit, right? You can do sort of a, a semicircle, and because it's watery. It doesn't leave much of a mark on the paint, but it's enough. Just like so. Um, 
and then with the white I'm just gonna white this white pot is terrible for staying open I find that brush guards are perfect at keeping it in place and I'm just gonna try and do the middle Like so, so um, you might want to do it smaller than I've just done it there. Again, it's difficult with a um, a camera kind of obscuring your vision. Um, but yeah, said so you might want to do the occasional white dot in the top corner and what have you. Uh, now the other other thing I will do is one once it's all dry, I would put a gloss varnish over it because um, obviously it is meant to be glass. Now that is the technique. Um, the rest of the video I'm going to do the um, purple, same sort of principle, uh, or pink rather, same principle, I'm just going to use a slightly different um, colour palette, so if you're interested in, in knowing that, then stick around, but um, I won't hold it against you if you uh, drop off now. So the, um, the purpley, pinky colour, I'm actually going to start off with a base coat of corn red. Now I was thinking about this, I don't really have a proper base coat for a magenta, but considering the amount of layers involved, doesn't really matter. Um, so again, I'm just thinking about where the fluid will rest. It's going to be quite low this side. But it's sploshing about and it's going to be higher on this side. This one's a little easier because it's pretty much whatever you do one side, you're just going to copy the other side. Yeah, I think I started this army tail end of last year. Um, I've been wanting to do like an 80s themed thing for ages, but never really couldn't quite think of the concept. And I was playing No Man's Sky with all their bonkers planets, and I thought Mechanicus go and explore lots of planets. They will look pretty cool with that sort of rave vibe going on. So there we go, so that's the base coat. Just like so. Now, because I didn't really want the red involved in this process at all, I'm just going to park that now uh, and move on to the next little bit. Now, I've got uh, another one of the Cote de Arms um, paints, which is, again, the company that made Games Workshop's um, original paints when I was a kid, the Citadel paints. Uh, and this is Warlock Purple, which I think is exactly what it was called when I was a boy. Now again, just like the bogey or snot green, it is quite a thin paint. Um, and because this is really the shade I wanted all along, but I, I knew it wasn't, it wasn't going to go over the blue very well at all, I'm just going to go over the red almost completely. Yeah. So yeah, just about magenta. And I'll leave that to one side. Um, 
I'm going to use, again, I don't really have the magenta paints that I probably want. Um, but I'm going to use, what is this, full grim pink. And I'm just going to add a little bit in to the warlock purple. And again, just like the green stage, we want the area that we're painting to be a little bit smaller. And I probably need to mix a little bit more of the magenta in there. Now, of course, if you're doing like, I don't know, a wine bottle, um, I'm sure the same technique could be used, but the, the top half, you'd probably want to do a little bit more, obviously on the green side. I might play around with that whenever I'm next painting a miniature wine bottle. I'm not sure when that will be. But I have been getting back into Mordheim quite a bit at the moment, so you never know. Okay, it's not too bad. Uh, now again, just keep layering in and mixing in the lighter colour until you're happy with it. Um, because there's so much difference between these two paints. Probably going to be a little bit more um, individual layers than the green side. And remember, it's always better to do a smaller or thinner coat. You know, do mix in some water. Um, to your paint because it will dry out naturally as you're using it so if you've mixed something up you keep that mixture alive a little longer but it also limits the amount of brush marks you leave in the model Now the pink, I'm actually going to try and do this top line with it. You can't quite see in the uh, the shot. There's the blue, and there's this line of pink, and then there's the darker sort of colour just underneath it. Uh, and just like the other one, I want this sort of fizzy. Now just like the last neon stage, um, you don't have to do this, but I've got the, um, the neon magenta. focus is it there you go the bottom of that it does look like he's uh, carrying around canisters of panda pops if anyone remembers that stuff 
still, yep. That amount of E numbers might do quite well in combat, who knows. It's alright. Now, just like the green stage, I'm going to do um, the sort of shine on the bottle at the very end. Of course, the shine on the glass would be over top both the the empty section and the whatever fluids inside. That's why I do it at the end. I'm going to grab some of this light grey. In this case, I want to carry on sort of straight down. This would be where it's shining. Just like that. And a bit at the top as well. And then grab that skull white or white scar or whatever it's called now. Honestly, and then they change the paint names. So hard to keep calling them something different. All right, so there we go, grab some white. I'm going to go over this side actually because obviously the grey was still fairly wet when I put the white in. I think it might do well. It's having a bit of a shine at the top. I keep moving off centre actually. I keep forgetting my camera lens is not actually in the middle of the camera on the other side, it's towards the one side. There we go. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. I'm going to put a gloss varnish over this, um, just to make it a little bit shinier. Uh, and then obviously go and, and do the underside of this. Um, but that's it, that's the technique. Um, let's say you do um, green and magenta. Um, I'm sure this technique works for all colours. Um, but really the main thing is, is like everything I paint, at least aim for three layers. So, you know, you've got your dark base coat, you've got your mid-range um, sort of second layer, and then you've got your highlight to go on, and then apply a wash. That's, it's really, you know, there's, there's obviously more to painting than that, but if you achieve that four-step process, base layer, second layer, highlight, wash, you can't go too wrong. Um, while I've got you, let me put on a wash. Just for one of these sections. Not a wash, what am I waffling on about now? A glaze, a gloss varnish. You know, not particularly precise there. You can see the other thing a gloss varnish does is bring out the colour slightly as well. All varnishes will. Um, so, there we go. Hey guys, sorry for the weird cut at the end here. When I finished the uh, bottles, um, I thought I'd go back and show you what I had changed because I've made a couple of corrections. So if I can just steady the camera and focus in. Um, so the green bottle did have the reflection painted along the side here. But when I thought about it later on, um, it didn't really make much sense. The shine should be on the top. So that's where I've moved it to, if you can just about see there. Um, I, had, I had been copying a bottle I had painted on a Mordheim figure um, where it, the shine would have made sense to be on the side. So it's just me not really thinking too far uh, into that. Um, I'd also um, 
added a few more bubbles onto the magenta because the, the top of it was a little empty. Uh, and of course, I've finished painting the underside of the green bottle as well. Um, so that's it. Um, he's almost done a few more things now. I hope you've enjoyed the technique. If you have, um, feel free to drop a like and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.